Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time it's the third episode in the series in which we're upgrading a 10-year-old desktop PC. So far we've added more RAM and an SSD, but the machine is still limited to USB 2 connectivity. And so in this video we're going to be adding some USB 3 ports to both the motherboard and the case. Right, here we are back with the PC we're upgrading, which has got four USB 2 ports on its rear I.O. panel. And one of these worried some of you in the first video in this series, as it looks a bit deformed. But never fear, despite the intense plug insertion action it's obviously seen over the years, it still works just fine. On the front of the case, there are also two additional USB 2 ports, and these connect internally down to a header which is on the motherboard just down here. I'll just give you a shot of that connector. And for many purposes, having these six USB 2 ports is perfectly sufficient. However, for any user who regularly backs up large quantities of data to an external drive, or who copies a lot of photos or videos from a camera or memory card, having some USB 3 ports will save a lot of time. To give you an idea of just how much time can be saved, USB 2 has a maximum theoretical data transfer speed of 480 megabits per second, which is 60 megabytes per second, whilst first generation USB 3 ports theoretically max out at 5 gigabits per second, which is 625 megabytes a second, or about 10 times faster. I should also note that, as illustrated in this table, USB 3 has progressed through three generations, and so technically these days I shouldn't even talk about USB 3.0, as that name theoretically no longer exists. As we can see, USB 3.1 and 3.2 ports can be up to two and four times faster than USB 3.0. And if you're wondering, USB 4 ports will start arriving on some new hardware in 2021, as I'll cover in a future video. Anyway, what we're going to do in this video is to add a PCIe expansion card into this free PCIe times one expansion slot, which will give us some USB 3 ports on the back of the computer. And it will also provide us with an internal USB 3 header, which looks like this one we can see on this modern motherboard. So, once we've fitted a PCIe expansion card in here, we'll be able to fit a USB 3 front bay onto the computer somewhere here to give us some front USB ports, and that bay will plug into the header on the expansion card. So, Let's now turn our attention to our upgrade hardware, the first piece of which is this, which is a PCIe, or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, USB 3 expansion card. Specifically, this is an STW PCIe to USB 3 card that I purchased in January 2021 for £14.99. However, these are now a pretty generic component available from lots of different manufacturers, so I'd very much advise you to shop around to get the best price. And if we get this out of the box, I can show you the things you're looking for. There are certain features that matter when you're buying one of these cards. Here we are in this little bag. Let's get it out. There it is. This is our uh, USB 3 expansion card. We can see the ports on there, a couple of USB 3 ports over there. It'll go into our PCIe slot. And when you're shopping for one of these cards, as I say, I would purchase on price, but subject to three different features. The first one is how many ports it has. This is a two port card. You might want more. There are four ports, there are six ports available. That's only a choice you can make. But there's two other features which are very important to take note of when you're making a purchase. The first one is you want to see if the card has got on it a power connector. And this card has got a Molex power connector, a four pin Molex power connector. Some cards have these, some have a SATA power connector, some don't have a power connector. And this matters because USB 3 can supply a reasonable amount of current. And if you want to, for example, run an external hard drive from the USB 3 port, it's best to have a power connector on your card so you can connect your computer's power supply to it and have enough power available from USB 3 ports. 
The other thing to bear in mind when selecting a card in addition to a number of ports and does it have a power connector or does it have a 19 pin USB 3 internal header, the thing we were just talking about, to which we can connect external USB 3 ports, ports for example on the front of a computer on a bay. And so if you want to have ports on the front of a PC, ports on the, on the case, you'll want to have the internal header like this. If you don't want them, obviously you can buy without that. And the price of these cards does vary considerably depending on whether you've got large numbers of ports, a power adapter, and the internal header. Talking of the internal header, that brings us to the second thing we're going to fit, which is going to be this, which is our front USB bay. And you don't have to add a front USB bay to a computer if you want to add USB 3 ports, you can just add a card. But if you want to go the whole hog, you need something like this. This is a CSL USB 3 front panel, as you can see. I really like these. There's lots and lots of manufacturers make very similar things, but I've actually purchased this exact model three times over. I've actually got one of these on the front of my main PC I use to edit all my videos on. I use one of these almost every day. And the reason I like these, you'll see if we open it up, let's just bring in Stanley and knife and uh, cut through the tape and get inside. Here we are. It's just a bay, not very exciting, but it is all made out of metal. Many of these types of bay are made out of plastic. And if they're made out of plastic, it's they're just not quite as nice. This is a metal product. I really like, really like this product. And as you can see, this is the cable which will connect to an internal USB header, either on a motherboard or on a card like this. And we can presumably show that, if we're lucky, this would plug into there like that. There we are. These are now all ready to put into our computer. Greetings! Here I am back again, all ready to fit our card and our bay. And to facilitate the latter, I now remove the other side panel from the computer. My hand comes straight through because we'll need access to both sides of this drive cage to secure the bay into place. But we'll start out with the card. So I'll give you a, maybe a tighter angle like this, where we can see very clearly the PCIe times one slot in which we're going to fit our PCIe Times 1 USB 3 expansion card. And it's worth pointing out we could fit our expansion card because it is PCIe Times 1 into a Times 1 slot, but also we could fit it into a Times 4 slot, a Times 8 slot, even a Times 16 slot like this one here, where you'd normally fit a graphics card. So if you haven't got a Times 1 slot available, but you've got another PCIe slot available, you can use that. And if you want to know more about PCIe slots, I've got a video all about PCIe slots, surprisingly enough, called Explaining PCIe Slots. Anyway, the main reason to give you this close-up shot is because we've got a bit of an issue going on here, which is because here is the front audio connector on this motherboard, and you can see the wires plugged in here a bit in the way of us using this slot. In fact, there are a lot in the way. So what I'm going to do is to pull that out for now, and we'll have to put that back a bit later on. And if I give you this angle, you can probably also see we've got a problem with this fan connector. This is the connector here for the fan over here. Also goes across our path. I'm going to remove that as well. It's almost as if this piece is, so he doesn't want us to use the PCIe times one slot. I'm going to get rid of that Velcro cable tie as well. And hopefully we can clear things out the way we've finally got access to, to put in our, our PCIe card. We also need to remove one of these blanking plates at the back of the PC. On some cases, these are a screw-on plate where we can simply unscrew the thing. Here, there are no screws. We're going to have to find one later, and these have to be snapped off, and hopefully I can get in to do that. Let's see. Oh, that's going to come out, hopefully. There we are. Oh, there we are. That came out relatively easily. And we can now take our card and slot it in like this. It's going to be fun getting that power Thing back into place, that front audio header, maybe I should put it back in first. You're seeing me having to think as I go here because this is a real tricky thing to work with. We'll do that, put that back in first, I think. Get that in. Shall I use two hands rather than trying to hold that? There we are. This is real-time upgrade stuff. We'll do that and then we'll hold that round there and then get the card in. Hopefully your case wouldn't be as tricky to work in as this one. There we are, our card has now gone in. And we now need to put a screw up here. Let's give you a, a close-up of that. And the screw you'll need will be a standard PCK screw, one like this. 
So if we put this in our screwdriver, we can put it into place. It's never a good thing when cases don't have screws pre-supplied. You have to find just one screw. It's a real pain if you haven't got them lying around as I would have. But anyway, that's now secured in. And as you can see, we've now got two USB 3 ports in the back of our case. Next, we need to delve back in and find ourselves a Molex power connector to plug into the back of our USB 3 card. And there's one down here, but I have a suspicion when I've taken off this piece of Velcro that it's, it's not going to be long enough, is it? No, there is no power connector there which is long enough to reach down here. There is one being used to power the hard drive down there. We could take that off there. We're going to have to take that off there. This is when having Velcro cable tidies becomes very, very handy because you can at least get the damn things off very easily to figure out what you're going to have to do. Come off, says he. And uh, yes, that will, that will reach. We could take it off the hard drive like this. It's come off down there as well now. There we are. This would reach across, I think, to the card. Even that's going to have to be untied first. I think what I'm going to have to do here is a little bit of reorganization. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we are. I've somehow managed to find a combination of connectors. So we've got power going into the PCIe card and still into our hard drive, our SSD, and up here to our, our DVD. And I've also put back in the fan connector down there and I've secured the cables as best I can. This cable management is nowhere near as neat as it was before, but hopefully one thing I've demonstrated here is that sometimes when you're upgrading a PC, it is the physical practical limitations that are just as much as an issue as choosing the right cards and fitting them in the computer. Right. Let's move on to something which I hope is going to turn out to be more straightforward, which is fitting our USB 3 front panel into this free 3.5 inch bay. To do this, I'm first going to reach inside the computer and give this a thumb to try and get out a panel like that. That came out straightforwardly. And we could now take the lead from our bay, put it through the front of our computer like that, feeding through inside. It's all happening off screen here, but now, no, 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 the bay is coming in. Hopefully this will fit in okay. Sometimes they're easy to get in, sometimes they're an absolute swine. Shall we guess which one this is going to be today? Something's catching somewhere, no idea where, but there we are. Oh, that's gone in very nicely indeed. And I point out here we've fitted this into a three and a half inch bay on the front of the computer. But if you don't have a free three and a half inch bay, say you've only got a free five and a quarter inch bay, you could use a five and a quarter to three and a half inch bay adapter, just like that one I used when fitting exactly the same USB 3 front panel into a computer in a video a few years ago. Returning to this upgrade, all we need to do is to put in the screws, first of all, on this side, and then around the back. And then back inside the case, we can connect the cable from the front bay to the header on our PCIe USB 3 card, like that. That's a good tight fit. And with a final check that all cables and connectors are seated correctly, they seem to be, we will put the sides back on the case and rejoice in the excitement of this PC's new rear and front USB 3 ports. Right, here I am back again. I've now booted up the computer, and if we go to this PC and right-click and do Properties, we can go into the Device Manager over here, and at the bottom under Universal Serial Bus Controllers, if we open that up, you will see we've got a USB root hub, USB 3.0. That's the card we've just fitted. It is working properly. The driver's been sorted out by Windows, as it would also be by Linux. There's no need to install anything from a small disk that came with the card. So, if we close that down and we open up this PC, you will see I've got connected to this computer a very fast SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD. And this is currently connected via one of the front USB 2 ports because what I want to do is to test the drive connected by both USB 2 and USB 3 to compare the performance. So let's close that down and go to Crystal Disk Mark, which I've got running, which has already picked up the right drive. We're going to be testing drive F and I'll run all the tests. 
there we are. This shows us how fast we can communicate with a drive over USB 2. And so what we'll now do is to eject the drive down there, and then we'll switch over the connector from USB 2 to USB 3. And there we are, our drive is back again. So we'll close that down and we'll now freeze and split our screen and repeat the test here for the USB 3 connection. And there we are, all is well with the universe. Our USB 3 ports are operating more rapidly than USB 2 and offering data transfer speeds with a drive at up to just over 200 megabytes a second. So almost six times faster here than USB 2 in this test. However, you might be surprised how relatively low these numbers are, up to about 200 megabytes a second transfer over our USB 3 port. And you might be thinking, well, is this to do with the drive? And it's not the drive. If we look at this screenshot of when I tested out this drive in a previous video connected by USB 3.1 interface, it can transfer data at well over 700 megabytes a second. So the test here is not being constrained by the drive. Rather, what is going on is our old PC here has got a motherboard with a G41 chipset, and this will be using the first generation of PCIe interface. And if we look at this table from my explaining PCIe slots video, you can see that PCIe 1.0, as we now call it, has a maximum data transfer speed of 250 megabytes a second, theoretically, using a times one slot. And this explains why we're getting transfer speeds of just over 200 megabytes a second here in the real world. And it does remind us that if you fit something like a USB 3 card into an older PC, you won't necessarily get full USB 3 speeds because of the constraints of the motherboard in terms of things like the PCIe interface. And also the drives on your system here, for example, are connected by SATA 2. So we could never transfer data more than 300 megabytes a second roughly because, again, you've got constraints of the hardware in the system. Anyway, this doesn't detract from the fact we've got ports operating a lot faster, but I thought it might be nice to finish off doing a real world test. And so let's set that up. And here we are. And what we're going to do here is to copy three gigabytes of files from the drive to the PC using, as you can see, USB 2 and USB 3. And Straight away, I think we can see the massive difference. The progress bar here shows us really very clearly graphically how much faster USB 3 is in a real world test, even on older hardware like this. It's, uh, yes, coming at what, 18.8 seconds to copy three gigabytes of data via the USB 3 port, and it's gonna take clearly quite a long while via the USB 2 port. So let's speed on through to the USB 2 port has finished. And here we are, the USB 2 port is coming into land, finishing off at 94.1 seconds compared to the 18.8 for USB 3, which makes USB 3 here almost exactly five times faster by my maths anyway in my head than the USB 2 port. So there are definitely benefits to adding USB 3 ports to an older PC if you regularly back up lots of data, say, to an external drive, or you copy a lot of photos or videos from a camera or card reader to your P. C. In the first three episodes in this series, we've given our old desktop PC some more memory, a new boot drive, and enhanced connectivity. Always, when making such upgrades to older hardware, you need to bear in mind how much it's worth spending on a piece of older hardware before you should do something more radical. And I think we've now about reached that limit. And so in the next episode in this series, we're going to take a different tack. We're going to give our 10 year old PC a brand new processor and motherboard. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.